What's up guys, this is Alex from Xtrades, back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And um, this week we do have some pretty interesting setups um, and some other interesting things to look at, like the seasonality. Um, we are averaging a little gain um, in the market this week for midterm years, so you'll see that when we go into it. But um, before we start, please like, comment, and subscribe to our Xtrades YouTube channel. It would mean the world to us. I'm trying to get stuff to hit the algorithm a little bit better, so thank you. All right, so the first setup, we're going to be going into city city group here. Um, see, you can see you got test one, test two, test number three, holding up the trend line. And ideally, we're going to be looking for calls and puts on this just because we want to see Monday opening up, um, holding the trend line, obviously. And that would give us confirmation to maybe look at longs there. Um, for... Another outlook, we go ahead and set an alert at the trend line. You can see that we did that. We um you just right click it. I'll show you real quick. You just right click, you hit add alert to trend line, and then um it should set it up for you. And you can edit it too, you can see right there. Um we could even type it out. Breaking trend line. So yeah, you could do something like that. But yeah, you can see why um, trendline plays are pretty versatile, so you can get a couple different kinds of trades on it. Um, obviously, right now it is holding up, so you know longs might be looking a little more favorable favorable at the moment. But um, if it did decide to like gap down and be outside the trendline Monday morning, you know there is a good chance that it could try to flush. So just something to look out for. Um, in our first two setups. Um, I've I grouped them together because they are trend line plays and um, they could go for calls or puts, but you just want to see that confirmation first. So Uber, kind of similar. Um, I would say this looks a little bit more like toppy, choppy than Citigroup, but um, Uber here is same, you know, same gist, right? You got test one, test two, test number three, and um, we went ahead and set an alert. Same thing I showed you in the last, and we would wait for it to either break down or Monday's open. We want to see it, you know, opening up over the trend line so it can maybe run back up to this trend line. So another call and put set up. You'll be waiting for confirmation on this. Um, and you've seen a couple of trades or a couple of setups that, you know, we covered where we're looking for the same exact thing. You just want to wait, um, see how the Monday open is, see confirmed buying you know, that's going to fit, you know, with your bias to the upside. Um, and likewise, you know, you'd wait for it to break down, wait for your alert to get set. Um, once it triggers, you know, you can probably take a trade. And we do the same thing. So breaking trend line. And that'll be ready to trigger if it does decide to break. Um, but you can see, I mean, it is holding up. So right now, maybe look for it to depending on the futures, of course, maybe look for it to hold up, um, look for some confirmed buying around open, and you know you can't take a trade up to this trend line. So, yep. So C um, and Uber, both very similar. Um, literally, we're gonna be looking for the same thing, basically. Just wait for that confirmation. Next, we got TGT, so this is Target, um, retail, retail stores, so this one's got a huge gap, um, pretty obvious, right? But you don't want to just jump into it right away. Um, you're going to want to see this 164.70 get taken out. So we did set an alert on that too. Um, I can even edit it. You do the same thing as the, as we did with the trend lines. Um, we can name it breakout. All right, so we named it breakout. Ideally, you'd want to see it breakout probably pull back, make a base off previous resistance, and then I can try to, you know, fill the gap up. Obviously, this is a pretty big gap, so it's not going to fill right away. Um, if you're doing, like, a swing trade on this, you'd need time on contracts to deal with, you know, any resistance. A lot of times, we'll try to fill, like, halfway and then find resistance, but it just depends. But if you're doing, like, a quick day trade, um, obviously, the 164.70 breakout could be really nice, um, giving you a fast push to the upside. So on this one, I'm going to be looking strictly at calls. Um, I mean, there is a little argument for puts, too. If it decides to, you know, open up below 
you know, this resistance, you know, it could reject off of it, but um, puts are kind of vulnerable, you know, with the gap. So I, want, I just want to see that 164.70 get taken out, um, give you a nice quick day trade maybe, and then even on a 164.70 breakout could give you a good swing trade as well. Um, as long as you get time on your contracts, at least 30 days out, 30-day um, expiration, maybe a little bit higher. So yeah, decent gap fill trade. Um, just wait for the trigger, of course, 164.70. Um, add an alert if you need to. So you can see these three setups here, we're gonna be waiting for confirmation, you know, as usual. Um, TGT, I'm just gonna be looking for upside though. These two, you know, we're gonna be looking at calls and puts uh, for potential. All right, Tesla. So we had this one on our watch list, watch list last week. Um, so what it was, it was holding up this previous support, right? So we were looking for it to hold up Monday's open um, in order to, you know, maybe get a double bottom. It wasn't able to do that. It actually opened up below it, um, giving a nice flush to the downside before, you know, finding this little breakout here. But we're going to re-add this to the watch list again. Um, maybe it'll give better confirmation this week. It looks like, you know, you do have a confirmed breakout. Your candle closed outside of here. You got one day of a pullback. And maybe we can, you know, go ahead and run up to this little 200 level before finding resistance. So I can make a good little day trade, maybe a couple day swing trade, um, depending how long it takes to get to this 198, 200 level. But um, this looks a little bit better this week compared to buying the counter trend reversal at support that we were covering last week. Because this one, you do have a confirmed um, wedge breakout. And, you know, the falling wedge is a very nice pattern to trade. Also, you do have MACD. Um, positive momentum to the upside. You do have the KDJ also giving a little crossover to the upside, so it could be something to look out for, maybe a little early hint of positive momentum. It looks like the volume was good too on this breakout. You got a big breakout candle, big volume. Um, so yeah, there, there was an interest and a rush to buy this thing when, you know, when it broke out. So, and this is only the beginning, it looks like. You know, you're, you're buying pretty much right, you know, pretty close to when it broke out originally. So um, this could be a good one. You know, just make sure that, you know, maybe making a base off 177 minimum um, if it did pull back. So if it's making like a base off previous support, you know, that's that's a good thing. So just something to keep an eye out for. Stop loss, you'd be looking at, you know, that 177 level, obviously, maybe 166.19, which is the 52-week low. Um, that would be need to be a stop loss if you were like doing like a swing trade with time on it. Because um, if you do like a day trade, I mean, obviously, it's way too, way too large. Um, it's almost 20 points wide. So, yeah, Tesla, I mean, you're looking at calls on this. Um, falling wedge breakout, move to 198.200. Target, waiting for that 164 level to break out. Um, Uber and C, obviously, going to be waiting for confirmation of the trend lines. Um, you just want to see both opening up Monday, holding the trend lines, you know, go to the upside, or you're going to want to see them break down um, to give you confirmation for puts. So, all right, this is our last individual name before we go into the indexes here. So this is Exom. Um, this is the energy play. You can see we got a very nice like triple top here, maybe multi top at supply. Um, you do have a confirmation candle showing a clear rejection. You have negative MACD um, crossing down. One thing that is uh, counter arguing that is this little KDJ crossing to the upside, but that was from these last two days of momentum. Um, but you can see, I mean, the MACD is holding a you know negative signal, so. Could be something to look out for. I'm going to be looking at puts on this, um, assuming that it holds, you know, within the resistance by Monday open, um, or even, you know, throughout the week, as long as it's holding under, it could be, a, you know, a good swing trade. Um, Monday could be a quick, uh, quick day trade and something like that. But um, I could see it running back down to this 107 level. Um, it's not too big of a price target and also not too small of a price target. So you can see really strong, or really strong support of this 107 there's even a little demand right here so there's something to look out for um look for follow through after this candle you want to see confirmed selling on the open um monday or really any other days um you just want to see confirmed selling and you know something showing you that you know the you know the momentum's weak short term so um i just feel like monday is a really good indicator um to kind of see like follow through with something from friday You'll see a lot, like, you know, if we have, like, a big, like, update on Fridays, a lot of times it will follow through to the upside on Monday. 
And um, same with like if you got a you know down Friday, down Monday, um, you're also going to see that correlation as well. So yeah, just something to look out for. It's not like you know a guarantee or anything, but um, no, just a it's it's a good thing to see. You know, you want to see that follow through with your bias. So um, I could even show you a couple of examples. You know where you know it didn't give you your confirmation, and you know would have saved you some money. Like uh, Pan W last week, it, it did. Um, open below the trend line we were looking for it on puts, but at the same time, it, it had an instant buying rate at the open. So it was very, very urgent buying. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't good confirmed selling and follow through that we'd be looking for. So you will run into those. Not all the setups are going to work. But um, yeah, so we're looking at puts on this. Move down to 107 or something like that, maybe. Um, just look for confirmed selling around the opens. And um, yeah. So we'll go into ES next. This is the S&P 500. Last week, um, we were actually covering this like little potential for this flag. Um, sorry, that kind of messed up, but you can see it. We had like potential for this flag. It did break out of that um, and ran right into resistance and the 200 uh, daily 200 EMA. Um, which was clear resistance. And we're, we're going to have to get over that this week, or um, at least at some point. Um, if we took off, well, here, let's just go down to the four hour. If we paid attention to this high right here, this 4050, we covered that last week as well. It was not able to breach that by Friday. Um, and you can see that the futures are opening up just a little bit lower. It's only down like 0.35, probably just natural reaction to this resistance. We had a really small range Friday, so... Um, same rules apply this week. The, there's just not a consolidation pattern. This does look like it could be making a top. So we will want to see it clearing over 4050, making a base on there. And then it probably will run into this overall all-time high to current downtrend line. So, And it also will run into supply. So that's where you'd probably be looking for resistance. Um, I don't think it's going to happen quite yet due to the seasonality, but, I mean, we'll have to see. Um, for setups, I don't really see anything too specific. Maybe look at day trading. Um, day trade at puts at this resistance, maybe, and you maybe like see a little move back down to back down to demand. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the seasonality, which we'll go into right now, from November twenty seventh up to December second. I'm sorry, the 28th to the December second is our trading week. You can see it is averaging a 046 percent return. Um, but otherwise, I mean, we do have that resistance, so it's just something to keep an eye on and, but also consider the seasonality. So we could run up, um, just based off that we did, we did follow it pretty good last week. Um, it only averaged like a 0.33% return or something small. Um, we might've been able to clear that by a little bit. So, and it also did have that little flag pattern. So good, good trading week for bowls. Um, at least for a couple of days, looks like you got a couple green daily candles, but, um, yeah, until it was not able to run into that 450 resistance and break it, um, that's going to be the level to focus on now. Same thing as last week, um, just no consolidation pattern. Looks like it could be making more of a top pattern, so just keep an eye on that. Um, looks like MACD is still showing you know, positive momentum. KDJ is not crossing over to the downside quite yet on the daily. Um, if we went down to the 4-hour, you could see MACD is giving a negative signal short-term. KDJ gave a signal all the way at the top, basically, um, that it was starting to give some negative momentum. So, yeah, just watch this level. Maybe you could look at like a day trade on puts. If it doesn't open too low, um, trade back down to demand before try to probably try to curl up about there. And that'd be for like SPY or SPX, by the way. Um, this is the future, so same thing. We're just using it because it's more real time data and um, futures trade on Sunday. So, all right, this is NQ. So this is the NASDAQ futures. Um, had a similar thing last week. It had that little flag um, broke out. We wanted to see it reclaiming over this previous resistance. There's also the 38.2% FIB. It was able to do that um, while also breaking out. So, But now you can see um, we are testing that again. So, I mean, same rules apply. Um, we're going to want to see it making a base off this previous resistance and be able to you know, run back up to this resistance and maybe find resistance about there. So this found resistance a little bit earlier than ES did. Um, 
and right now you know it is debating on whether it wants to hold this um, previous resistance right here so you do want to see the Nasdaq holding this this week um, KDJ gave a negative signal a couple of candles ago um, but otherwise the MACD is still holding a positive uh, momentum to the upside so nothing like too bearish um, we are trading under the 200 EMA and there's also this downtrend line same thing as kind of like ES um, I do think we're going to test that eventually. So uh, maybe on QQQ, just make sure um, this level holds. You can maybe take calls or something like that if it decides it wants to pop back over. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I wouldn't really look at puts until it got under, you know, this little pivot right here. It'd probably do something like this. Um, probably break under, back test, go down, back to demand. So yeah, nothing too specific. Um, on the NASDAQ or the ES really this week, just watch those resistance levels. Um, there's no breakout patterns or anything um, quite yet, but you know we'll let it form, see what happens. Okay, RTY is the small mid caps, um, still on a pretty nice uptrend. You can see, was it not able to clear the 61.8% FIB that we covered? Um, it actually even topped out here at 1913. Um, and it's also finding resistance at the 200 EMA, so not really seeing a setup on this at the moment. Um, maybe when it comes back down to the trend line, you could look at calls on IWM, um, assuming that it holds, or you could wait for it to break down the trend line and you could take puts down to demand for IWM. But I mean, it just depends. You're going to want to see that trend line um, get touched eventually, and you're going to want to see confirmation of it holding or breaking. But otherwise, I mean, you can see just in a choppy range kind of um you can maybe argue take puts since it's at the 200 ema um maybe just for a quick day trade though back down you know to the trend line so yeah nothing too specific we're gonna want to see it getting over the 61.8 make a base off that and be able to get over 1913 um so yeah that goes for all three indexes you just want to see them clear clear their major resistance levels um and also hold their bases and you can see i mean RTY did hold a 50% FIB base, pretty nice. Um, NQ last week held a, held a decent base. Uh, it was able to pop back over and hold the 50 EMA. So, I mean, there's really no, like, crazy bear signals at the moment. Um, and the VIX would also agree with that. So we'll go into the VIX. Um, last week we were looking for 2264 to get broken in order to go back down to 20s and the 19s. It was able to do that. And... Um, yeah, I would say maximum you could see it pull pull down a little bit maybe to this before it will try to curl up. So we could see a little spike in volatility when it gets down here. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I'm not really seeing any crazy signals on the VIX. Um, it will eventually have a mean regression back to the 2022 average close, um, which did go significantly lower this week. Let's go ahead and get into the data real quick. Pull up numbers. Sorry, one second. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. All right, so we got the 2022 average close here. Um, it did come down just a little bit to 26.08. So this was at, in like the 2620s, and it came down pretty significantly. I might need to add one more date real quick. Um, Friday's close of the 25th, so we're missing the 24th and the 25th. Let's go ahead and add them real quick and see what they were. Let's see what the average is right after. It's the 24th. Twenty fifth. All right, and we'll go get our close real quick for the twenty fourth and twenty fifth. Oh, I'm sorry, we were closed on Thanksgiving, so it's just the twenty third and and the twenty fifth. But it doesn't really matter. I won't change the date right now. So we got twenty thirty four. Okay, that we do have that one. Okay, so we're just missing Friday's close. I'm sorry. So we got twenty fifty one here as our most recent close. 
I'm not sure if it's going to bring it down much, but it's still, you know, I wanted to show you the data. So this is our most recent. 2051. So that brought it down to 2606. So it did break it down just a little bit. Um, we'll even lower it. So this is our 2022 average close. Um, and it will eventually probably have a mean regression back towards that. Um, so this dropped actually from, you know, 2620s recently down to 2606 because volatility is, you know, significantly lower compared to up here. Um, but yeah, just um, for the VIX, just look for the base to get made down in 19s. Maybe start looking at puts and, you know, be careful with longs once it gets down there because volatility might try to curl up. But um, otherwise, no, nothing else really specific to look at on this. And now we're going to the U.S. dollar. Um, so same thing as last week. I mean, it's making a um, base off the 200 EMA. We did say it would run up to 107 probably, which is this previous resistance and our previous support and find resistance about there. And it was able to do that. So now it's just back at the same level. Um, this 200 EMA is acting as pretty strong support. MACD is trying to curl up, but it's still negative. So um, just something to look out for. You know, maybe currency traders are trying to start pricing in, you know, some volatility and bearish movement. Um, as they have been all year. I mean, you see the dollar just crazy move. So um, just make sure this 105 area holds um, if you're a bear. Um, but bulls, I mean, you're going to want to see this level get broke. Um, this 200 EMA and 105s, you're going to want that go on ASAP. Because um, if it starts basing out here, you know, there's a good chance that volatility will spike and it could spook people. So um, we'll have to see. VIX is not really agreeing with any downside yet, but once it starts curling up around 19s, or if it decides to, you know, that could be a good area to get really cheap puts um, for swing trades. If we go look at the seasonality for the rest of the year, um, we're not really getting a dip until this, what is that? 06, December, down to like the 15th. So a um, little, bit, little bit at the beginning, down to the middle of the month, and then, you know, looks like it does average a rally. So, so maybe that VIX 19 level, you know, that they were covering, you know, maybe that, you know, about lines up with, you know, December 6th or something like that. Once it bottoms about here, you know, we could start seeing that dip and um, the VIX will try to meme regress back to the 2022 average close and also these moving averages. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, just remember, wait for confirmation as usual. Um, I know this is not like the, the really the only like straightforward setup on this, I would say, uh, for bias. You're going to be looking at a long bias on Tesla and a short bias on Exxon because um, you do have like the confirmation. You got confirmation of the breakout on Tesla and you do have a confirmation of a rejection on Exxon. Um, TGT, you're going to be waiting for that breakout to the upside of that 164 Uber and C. Uh, you just want to see, you know, how it holds up the trend line first. Um, just because, you know, they are steep, um, especially C. So, you know, maybe it's not going to, you know, hold up right away and there's a chance it could break. And uh, same with Uber, maybe not as steep as C, but still, I mean, you do have this rejection candle from Friday. Um, maybe the futures bring it down just low enough to where it opens below the trend line. You just never know. So you're going to want to see it, um, you know, obviously holding or breaking first before you enter anything. And um, that's either going to be with confirmed buying around the open or confirmed selling around the open. Um, and that really goes for any day of the week. But um, Monday, you know, is coming up. So you just want to keep a lookout for that. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe our X-Trades YouTube channel. And um, I'll see you on Monday. I'm going to go ahead and end this video, get a sent over a person, and um, upload this and the written report for you all. So if you didn't know, in the Sunday watch list, um, we also post a written report in the watch list channel. Um, it's like a quick you know, summary of what we went over here, just a little bit faster. So um, if you didn't have time to watch the video or anything like that, um, go check it out. All right, guys, thanks.